In October of 2020, Facebook's Oculus launched their newest headset, the Quest 2. This is probably one of the most seamless user experiences I've ever seen in a high-tech product like this. And I actually purchased one for Christmas, so we're gonna do something a little special for this video, and I'm actually going to do an unboxing, as well as a quick ergonomic study, in addition to the more typical industrial design analysis that I often do. To start, I'm gonna come up with three words that I think best describe the industrial design of the Oculus Quest 2. If you want, you can pause the video here and come up with your own words. All right, so here's what I came up with. Approachable, accessible, and effortless. These words are pretty similar to each other and I probably could have used just one word and that would be approachable, but I wanted to expand on it at least a little bit. The fact that the design and overall customer experience is so clearly and singularly focused is a real testament to the company. For a company the size of Facebook or Oculus, I'm genuinely impressed by their ability to create a seamless user experience that's clearly expressed in the industrial design, the packaging and unboxing, the software, the ergonomics, the art direction, and just about everything else. When you have a giant company like Facebook, it's so easy for priorities to get muddled and for lapses in communication to happen. And I have no idea what the culture is like at Oculus or Facebook, but regardless of what it's like, they managed to pull this product together to express a crisp and clear vision. This product is approachable for sure. So let's start by looking at why we feel that way. If we look at the silhouette, we can see that the design is pretty soft. There are no hard edges or straight lines on this device really at all. Everything's sort of puffed out and very pillowy and nice and soft. And this is really what helps to make the design approachable and non-threatening. Like anybody can just pick up this device and use it. And it turns out that you actually can do that. The, the device delivers on that perception. So when you unbox the Quest 2, there are several simple instructions that clearly communicate you know, pretty complex ideas with very minimal illustrations. When you put the device on, you're immediately introduced to some simple and basic how-to guides with fun little cartoon characters explaining the whole setup process. So if we look at the original Oculus Quest, the industrial design is pretty similar in terms of product architecture and just general form factor. But there are some differences that I think really matter. So the less obvious things are those areas of softness that we've already discussed. So if you do a side-by-side -side comparison of the Quest 1 against the 2, you can really see it. So check out the way that the form intersection happens here. On the Quest 1, there are two separate parts. They're clearly delineated by both surface continuity and material change. The Quest 2, however, treats this as one continuous surface. So, you know, the parting line is still there, but it's treated as one seamless piece. You can see the softness in the straps as well. So the Quest 1 strap is a hard rectilinear form, whereas the Quest 2 is a soft fabric covered pill shape. You can see this soft approachable pill shaped design language in the strap adjustments as well. It's pretty much everywhere. Even the way that the cameras intersect the main body are a lot softer. So with the Quest 1, the areas around the camera is much larger and more imposing. And make no mistake, this could easily be an engineering-driven functional decision. But regardless of the reason, the Quest 2 cameras feel much more integrated into the main body. This whole thing feels like one harmonious piece. By the way, if you've made it this far into the video, you probably like the content and you should subscribe. You can always unsubscribe later if you change your mind. Now, probably more than anything else, the color of the device also greatly contributes to this approachability also. So the lighter color just feels a lot more accessible. It feels less like a gamer device and more like something that anybody could use. So when I looked at all of the trailers of the design, I thought that it was actually pure white, but it's actually like this very, very light, cool gray rather than pure white. And the black touch points, they're not really black. They're more of like a super dark 90% gray or 95% gray. This helps to soften an otherwise very high contrast color combination. Like I, like I really can't think of anything more high contrast than black on white. But the fact that they muted each value contributes to that approachability. The color combination that you see here is striking and recognizable, but it's not jarring. 
Other gaming consoles are using this black and white combination like the Xbox Series S and the PS5, but the Quest 2 does it in a way that's just a little bit more approachable. They're muting the colors more. They also stuck to similar textures for the materials. There aren't really many glossy pieces here. So that helps to make that material contrast more visually subdued. If you look at the PS5, it's this super glossy black against matte white, which is pretty much as high contrast as you can go in terms of color and finish. And there are probably good functional reasons for making the Quest 2 more of an off-white. It won't get dirty as easily. And this is especially true for the touch points. The fact that the major touch points around the edge of the headset and the surface of the controllers are matte black will help to keep the device looking clean. So this was probably as much of a functional constraint as much as it was a visual one. And this approachability and accessibility bleeds into pretty much every other aspect of the brand and the design. So the packaging is a simple cardboard sleeve, that's it. And when you open the box, it's just a cardboard living hinge, which shows the product neatly on display. So like I said earlier, the instructions are super clean, seamless with accompanying illustrations. So this helps to make that design feel very accessible and setup is pretty effortless. This accessibility is even shown in the art direction or basically the way that the product is marketed visually. So we have this nice white product on a white background, fairly subdued lighting, nothing too crazy or intimidating, nice shimmering pastel colors coming in and out. It just feels like something that anybody could pick up. It's not like this aggressive gaming device. It's not intimidating in any way really. So let's actually try this thing on and see how it feels. So. One thing that's really important with VR or AR, any sort of wearable, is that you want to be immersed in the experience. And if you feel uncomfortable, it's obviously very distracting from that. So if we put this on, let's just try it out really quick. So it feels pretty good. Um, it's not bad. I'd be curious to try this out for an extended period of time, like more than 20 or 30 minutes. But you know, first impressions are it's fine. There's a little bit of tension right here for me personally. It's sort of an area that's very sensitive. So because of that, it will actually lead to a headache over time. Now, I did buy the comfort strap for that very reason, and I'm sure that that improves on the experience considerably. You don't want any sort of pressure or tension, especially along this area right here. And you can see that the team was trying to account for that if you look. There's a lot of padding right here. There's a considerable amount of padding, but I think that one way that they maybe could have made it even better was, well, obviously the comfort strap is one way to deal with it, or maybe adding a counterweight. You'll see that on uh, some of the HoloLens products and they're quite comfortable. This is a tough challenge though. I wanna make that clear. Like this is not an easy industrial design or ergonomics challenge to solve because Basically, the way that this works is you have a giant box strapped to somebody's face, right? So right off the bat, they're gonna kind of look a little bit nerdy. Uh, I don't know if there's a way around that with the way that the components are set up right now. On top of that, you have all of this weight situated in front of you. So it's sort of pulling your neck down a little bit and that immediately causes more discomfort around the neck and head. The surfacing on the inside here sort of blends really nicely. So it feels like it would be very comfortable and the way that all of this is managed is really well done. It's worth mentioning that this is incredibly important because if you think about it, when you first put this thing on, this is what you're looking at. You're looking at the inside of the device just seconds before you actually put it on your head and on your face. So the fact that they spent so much time on the inside of the device and sort of working these surfaces to feel really fluid and transitional is really interesting and very well executed. So overall, I think that the Oculus Quest 2 is a really well executed design, especially when you take into account the sorts of constraints that the team was working with. Just based on this design, it seems like Oculus is targeting everybody. They want this to be 
a console just like PS5 or Xbox or anything else. They want this to be accessible to everyone. That's reflected in the overall design, making it nice and soft and pillowy and approachable. That's reflected in the price point, and it's reflected in the way that everything is set up. I don't know if you guys have ever used some of the older VR headsets, but it seemed significantly more complex and Oculus and the team has done a really great job of sort of simplifying and making that a seamless experience. Anyway guys, thank you so much for checking out the video. I hope you learned something. I hope you found this helpful. If you want me to do more sorts of unboxing videos like this, I'd be happy to do it. Don't forget to subscribe. It does help me out. It does make a big difference and uh, I appreciate the time. Have a great day guys.